In this video, what I want to do is prove an orthogonality relationship uh, with Laguerre polynomials. And so the orthogonality rule with Laguerre polynomials is this. It's that if you take the integral from 0 to infinity, ln of x, lm of x, times the weight, e to the minus x, then this guy right here is equal to the Kronecker delta function. So it's, it's equal to 1 if n is equal to m and 0 otherwise. And so what I want to do here is actually show to you that this is true. Uh, so how am I going to do that? Well, uh, the trick with most of these types of orthogonality integrals is to use integration by parts a bunch of times. All right, so how are we going to get started with this? Uh, well, uh, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, keep this ln right here as it is, but I'm going to rewrite this lm right here in terms of the Rodriguez formula. So, so the first way that uh, I introduced the Gare polynomials. So uh, dm dx m x to the m e to the minus x e to the minus x dx. Okay. Um, so one thing we see is that these two cancel out, um, and we can pull out this m factorial right here. And so this whole guy is one over m factorial integral zero to infinity ln of x times the mth derivative dxm of xm e to the minus x dx. Okay, and so now I'm going to make an assumption. I'm going to assume that m is greater than n. And and this is, this is um, I mean, and I'm not losing any generality here, right? Because I, if, uh, you know, here I'm saying that m is greater than n. Uh, if in fact n was greater than m, then I could just, you know, commute them over and then change labels. So this right here corresponds to any case where n is not equal to m. Okay, so, so how are we going to solve this guy right here then? Well, uh, the first thing to do, as always, is integration by parts. And so if we, if we do integration by parts on this guy, then what do we get? Well, if we do it one time, we have uh, ln of x over m factorial times d to the m minus 1 dx m minus 1 uh, x to the m e to the minus x evaluated from 0 to infinity minus integral 0 to infinity ln of x uh, prime, so we move a derivative over, times uh, d to the m minus 1 dx to the m minus 1 x to the m e to the minus x d x. Okay, uh, so let's take a fir uh, first, let's look at this term out in front. Um, what's this going to be equal to? Well, uh, one thing we know is that uh, this right here corresponds to what? I mean, so, so, so if we take m minus 1 derivatives of this, what's going to be true? Well, we know that every term when we do this, this big old product rule is going to include some e to the minus x. And because of that, uh, we know that when we evaluate this guy at infinity, it'll go to zero because of that e to the minus x uh, pulling it down to zero. What about zero? Uh, can we do we do we know for sure that this thing's going to be equal to uh, zero at zero? Well, the answer in that case is yes. Um, we know this is going to be equal to zero because if we if we only take m minus one derivatives of this guy right here, then there's still going to be a zero of order one at at x equals zero, and so because of that. Um, and because yeah, so because and and one one way to see that if 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 you don't believe me is to is to uh, uh, rewrite this using the general Leibniz rule, and then you'll see that each term in that sum has uh, has an x left over, and, and so because of that, uh, this whole guy here is going to be equal to zero at both infinity and zero, and in fact that'll be true if this is m minus one or m minus two all the way down, um, and so because of that, uh, this right here this. This term is going to be equal to zero. This is a boundary term, and we're just going to be left with this guy right here. Um, okay, that's good. Um, we can re repeat this process over and over again because we know that all of these boundary terms are going to go to zero by, by the same type of argument right here. And what we're left with is that uh, this whole guy right here is equal to minus one to the m, right? So a minus sign on the integral that we do m times times our integral 0 to infinity. Now what we have, uh, L sub n of x 
with m derivatives on it. So we're taking m derivatives of this ln of x. And then we have x to the n e to the minus x dx. And so let's look at this Laguerre polynomial right here. So what, what do we know about this right here? We know that uh, ln is a polynomial, uh, roughly, that has as its uh, highest order term x to the n. So what does that mean? That means that if we take if we take m derivatives of this guy, that's going to be equal to zero because uh, because we assumed from the get go that m was greater than n, and so m derivatives of x to the n is going to go to zero. So that means that this guy right here is equal to uh, zero whenever m is greater than n. So so what we what we've, what we've done so far is just proven that um, when n is not equal to m, we get zero. The last thing we need to show is that uh, when we have n equal to m, we get 1. So how are we going to show that? Well, uh, let, let's start from this step right here. We, we've already done all this work. So let, let's say that we're looking at the case where, where n is equal to m. What, what do we get in that case? Well, in that case, we have minus 1 to the n over n factorial integral 0 to infinity ln nth derivative of x times x to the n e to the minus x dx. Okay, so this is the integral that we need to evaluate. So uh, we need to first figure out what is L, the nth derivative of ln. And the way that I'm going to uh, look at that is by looking at the series definition for Laguerre polynomials. So the series definition you'll recall is a sum from k equals zero to n n choose k minus x to the k over k factorial. And so what does this mean? Well, if we're, if we're looking at the, uh, the nth derivative of this thing, uh, if we want to take n derivatives of this guy right here, well, then we know that uh, the only term from the sum that's going to contribute is the term that corresponds to uh, k equaling n, because all of the previous terms are going to be you know, x, to ra x raised to some power, which after you take n derivatives is going to be equal to 0. And so the only term that we need to uh, to worry about when we take our nth derivative is uh, the last term in the sum. And so that's going to be n choose n minus x to the n over n factorial. Okay. And uh, what do we know about this? Well, we know that uh, n choose n is equal to 1, so that's fine. And we know that if we take n derivatives of x to the n, that's just going to give us another n factorial. So that's going to give us uh, n factorial divided by n factorial, which is 1. So this whole thing right here just comes out to be equal to uh, minus 1 to the n. Because that cancels out, n factorial cancels out by taking the n derivatives. We don't have any x's left, so we just have minus 1 to the n. Okay, so that means that this whole, this whole, uh, this whole guy right here is equal to, equal to what? Well, we have minus 1 to the n times minus 1 to the n, so minus 1 to the 2n, which is always even, so always plus 1. So this whole thing is just 1 over n factorial, integral 0 to infinity, x to the n, e to the minus x, dx. Aha! But this integral right here, this is, this is a famous integral, uh, this integral right here is just gamma, the gamma function of n plus 1. But the gamma function of n plus 1 is, is probably the most famous value of the gamma function because uh, it's equal to n factorial. So we have n factorial over n factorial equals 1. So we've done it. Uh, we, we, we've been able to show that our, ortho our orthogonality relationship for Laguerre polynomials uh, works. The, 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 this expression right here is true. When n is not equal to m, uh, we get 0. When n is equal to m, we're able to show without too much work that you get one. And so we've done it. We've, we've proven this orthogonality relationship.